Hello, hello. Greetings. Good evening. How is everyone doing? I hope you guys are all doing fantastic. Today is the, um, I know it's Wednesday, the 13th of March. Again, guys, I don't live in this reality anymore. Half the time, I don't even know what day it is. And um, I wanted to welcome everybody. I apologize for being late. Uh, today's topic is going to be the lost tribes of ancient Israel. The lost tribes of ancient Israel. So how do you guys like my uh, little wings that I put back there? <laughs> a lot of you were, or some of you were asking me about the wings. So before I get into the topic, uh, I would like to uh, share a little bit about myself. Okay, I am a water element. For those that are into the elements, um, I am a Scorpio. I am a water element. I was born in the 1st of November. <laughs> I'm not going to say the year. Uh, long ago, right? I'm ancient. And... Um, I am, what else, what else? Um, I love what I do. I love what I do. I had an opportunity to do my my class this morning, my Monday class, which was beautiful. I loved the Galactic Jedis that were on there. We covered the, uh, the first subject. Uh, of course, there's four classes and we covered a lot of material. I also had the opportunity to uh, do a second class at three o'clock. Now, for those that are interested in taking my course, I am only taking... Um, 10 students at a time. So for those that missed my other classes last week, you could enroll to my next class coming up next Monday. Monday, a uh, week from yesterday, no, a week from two days ago, five days from now, I'm going to start a new class with 10 more individuals. So make sure you guys sign up quick because um, I'm only taking 10 people at a time. So before I get to the topic, I do want to share about on this day in history and what happened in this day in history, right? On the 13th of March. Well, today, according to the History Channel, on the 13th of March, the Tsars Alexander II was assassinated in St. Petersburg. All right. So we do know that this took place in 1881, according to the History Channel. All right. And um, also, I want to... Let you guys know that the transmission of the Blue Avians, I know I said it was going to be released last Friday. Um, there was some issues in the editing. We needed to edit it once again to make sure it was good. And so it is upcoming this Friday in uh, three days, two days, sorry. So in two days, my transmission from the Blue Avians is going to be uploaded on my YouTube channel. And... Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I'm still working on getting the secret government released, the secret government released. Now, there are people out there who bought the secret government 14 years ago, in 2008, when it first came out, and they are selling it for a ridiculous amount of money, $500 for the book, $600 for the book. Don't buy into that. This is just somebody who bought it 14 years ago. That is just trying to sell it online. Okay, now that I'm a public figure, they're trying to make money off my first book. When it comes out, it's only going to be like twenty bucks, guys. Don't don't spend five six hundred dollars for the secret government just because somebody's selling it on Amazon. That is the old book. Okay, so wait till it comes out. It's only like twenty bucks. And um, let's see, anything else? Oh yeah, I would like to thank each and every single one of you guys for being here once again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just acknowledge some of you. I see Radiant Guardians is in the house. Joanna Cosmo Grow is in the house. Sandra uh, Chastine Rose is in the house. Uh, Sylvia Foster is in the house. Cosmo Grow, Loma Anna G. Who else is in the house? Uh, Sandra is in the house. Chastise Rose. Uh, Lee Star is in the house. Um, who else is in the house? Uh Let's see. Sylvia Vidal is in the house. Actually, I'm going to, I can't really read. I need my glasses. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge some of you guys through my phone. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and shout out to a few of you. <laughs> it's so hard to read without my glasses. Let's see if I can. Simone S is in the house. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, everyone that's in the house, all of almost 500 people now. Thank you so much for being here. So, okay, today's topic is a bit controversial, guys. Okay, it's a bit controversial because uh, the fact that 
um, there is a lot of mystery surrounding what happened to the lost 10 tribes of Israel. All right. Some people believe that um, the lost 10 tribes of Israel actually fled during the um, the Neo-Assyrian expansion of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. They left the scene after Solomon, right? After Solomon, they left the scene. And in some cases, some of them traveled to different continents. Okay. I'm just speculating, but I do have some articles that I want to share based on, you know, speculation because technically nobody really knows what happens, what really happened to the lost 10 tribes of Israel. Um, before I even hypothesize where they could have gone, and I share some of these articles, I've always believed that the concept of the 12 tribes of Israel were directly related to the 12 houses of the Zo of the Lyran system, the Lyran constellation. And um, I believe that the the 12 sons of Jacob or the you know the 12 ruling the 12 families of ancient Israel were not about a specific religion because they they have nothing to do with Judeo Christianity today but they were all about preserving a type of genetic strain right a particular DNA which I believe is the Lyran Syrian Pleiadian genetics so I do believe that there is a genetic association with the original tribes of Israel and also let me remind you guys that there is no resemblance to the Israelis of today. Okay, those are not the, uh, the 12 houses or the lost tribes of Israel. The lost tribes of Israel is believed that they had ancient knowledge of the ancient mystery school teachings. Uh, some believe that uh, they were the original pre-European settlers like Gaul, uh, you know, like the Druids and the Celts, right? They fled after the, uh, the expansion of the... Um, of the um the persian empire so they fled the scene others believe that they also crossed over into the americas right and um so on and so forth can you guys hold on one second i'll be right back give me a second All right, so my dog Athena needed to go potty, and uh, even though I walk her at four o'clock, which was two hours ago, she always gets a walk around four o'clock. There is times where she has to pee again. So instead of give, waiting for an hour and twenty minutes, right? I'm not going to let her suffer the fact that she has to go. So I had to let her go out for a second, guys. I um, I'm back. Okay, so. I didn't want my dog to suffer for an hour and 20 minutes of me being on the live when she had to pee again. So thank you for uh, being patient. So as I was saying, the original lost 10 tribes of Israel were seafarers, right? They were seafarers. Um, they were the original. My research, based on what I understand, and I'm still going to share some articles based on what others say, is that they were, okay, well, first let's identify who they are. Okay, let's identify who the lost hand tribes of Israel are. So, in the Bible, they are known as one second. I, I know I haven't memorized their names, but I will mention who they are. Okay, so we have the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Asher, the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Simon or Simeon, and the tribe of Zubalon, okay, which were all the sons or grandchildren of Jacob. Again, um, according to the Bible stories, right, Abraham had two sons, right, Ishmael and Jacob. Jacob had 12 children. 
uh, I'm sorry, he had two sons, Esau and, yeah, no, Jacob had 12 children. That's right. And so these children went on to become the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, throughout history, we've only known about one tribe, and that is the tribe of Judah, which, which ruled northern Israel, and the tribe, I'm sorry, southern Israel, and the tribe of Benjamin, which ruled northern Israel. But whatever happened to the other 10 tribes that I just men mentioned, like Dan, Naphtali, Manasseh, Issachar, Zabuli, Asher, Ephraim, and Gad, whatever happened to those? Well, it is my personal belief, and for those that have read my book, I was able to pinpoint who these tribes were in the times before the rise of the Roman Empire. They had already settled in different parts of the world. So I believe that the tribe of um, Zebulun went to Africa. The tribe of Zebulun went to Africa. Um, the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of uh, Asher and Reuben and Gad and Issachar and Simon, well, guess who they were? Think about it. When we read history, we hear about these 10 unknown tribes that worked in collaboration to bring down one of the most corrupt empire ever in the history of our world. And that is known as the Roman Empire. Okay, the Roman Empire. So what if these barbaric tribes that ransack Rome to its knees were no other than the hidden 10 tribes of Israel under new names? Okay, so we hear that history calls them the Burgundies, the Lombardies, the original Franks of Gaul before they became the French, the the um, the the what's that one? The Vikings. I almost forget the Vikings, um, the Anglo Saxons, and there was two more. There were a total of ten. I believe that these, whatever you want to call them, that these early pre-European settlements along with the African tribe, and even they say that two or one, uh, yeah, two of the tribes from Manasseh and Ephraim uh, went over into the Americas, which were the children of Joseph, right? Joseph of, uh, of Israel. So what if, what if these lost ten tribes of Israel were no other than the, the early pre-European settlements that were already living in alignment with the ancient mystery school teachings, like the Celts and the Druids. That's the one I was thinking about. So we have the Lombardies. We have the, um, oh God, the Vandals. Uh, we have the um, the Ostrogoths. There we go. It's coming to me now. The Visogoths, the Ostrogoths, the Lombardies, the Vandals, the um, Vikings, um, the Celts, the Druids, the, you know, the Saxons. Those are the, the lost 10 tribes of Israel, all right? History calls them barbaric, but they weren't barbaric. They were actually the people that were able to flee the rise of the open empires, right? Remember how there were four open empires, beginning with Babylon, which also enslaved them. We had the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, and then, of course, we also had what? The Roman Empire. So what I believe would happen was after the death of Solomon— these 10 lost tribes, all they did was travel to different continents, knowing that they were always going to be persecuted by the empires. Okay? That's what happened to them. Now, that's my personal belief. That's what I share in both of my books, Our Cosmic Origin, The Secret Government. and um, But I'm also going to share different perspectives because I believe in a universal platform where we could bring forth different concepts and not just stick to one idea. But that's my personal belief, all right? I believe that the Visogods, the Ostrogods, the Lombardies, the um, the Franks, the Celts, the Druids, the Vikings um, were the ones that were considered the lost 10 tribes of Israel under new names. That's my personal belief. And, and yes, we did have a tribe called the Zebulun that went to Africa. And according to Mormon doctrine... Believe it or not, according to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one of the tribes traveled over into the Americas um, 3,000 years, 1,000 years prior to the, to the incarnation of Jesus himself. That's according to the Book of Mormon, all right? It is believed, according to the Book of Mormon, that the Nephites that they talked about, right, the natives of the Americas, were actually lost one of the tribes where they were one of the lost 10 tribes of Israel that traveled over into the Americas. So 
It is believed that they spread out to the different continents in order to um, escape the persecution of the Assyrian and then later, of course, the Roman Empire. All right, so let's let's read about what um, some of these other scholars have shared about who these lost ten tribes are. So this is coming from an article by the name of the Jewish Voice. So who are the lost ten tribes of Israel? After King Solomon died, the Israelites divided their kingdom into two. The north became Israel with ten tribes. The other two tribes in the south were called Judah. I've already mentioned that. In 1722 BC, Assyria conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, while many of the ten northern tribes migrated over to Judah. Some members of these tribes fled, were taken captive, or deported to other lands. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, described in Kings chapter 17, verse 5 to 6, and also in 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 26. These became known as the ten lost tribes. The twelve sons of Israel became the twelve tribes of of Jacob. God, uh, I guess, freed them from slavery in Egypt. We Okay, we know that story and brought them into the land of Israel that he promised to their forebears. So where do they go? Captives from Israel's 10 tribes were taken north, south and east. Okay, well, that kind of ties into what I said, right? They fled to other continents. Um, and others followed trade routes eastward into the Orient. Okay, so according to this article, the Chinese are also part, they, the Chinese could be one of the tribes of Israel. Some of them went to the Orient, right? To the Eastern, where the where the Asian people come from. So there we go, brothers and sisters, you know, the, the original tribes of Israel are not the people in Israel today. They scattered themselves all over the world, right? <laughs> they went to Africa, to the Americas, to pre-early European um, regions, right? Becoming the Vikings, becoming the, you know, Celts, uh, the Druids, the Visigoths, Ostrogoths so on and so forth. Um, they were just hiding themselves, right? They took away their treasures. They took away their ancient knowledge, with, which could be traceable back to Egypt and hence Atlantis. Uh, let's see. So I guess according to this article, why did they disappear? Did they assimilate into other societies? Were they persecuted or wiped out? Because of persecution over the centuries in many of the countries in which they now live, many hid their Jewish heritage by practicing their faith in secret. Some are locally known to be Jewish and suffer prejudice and persecution because of it, but have only recently become known to the rest of the world. In the last 75 years or so, Jewish communities have become known as have become known in Ethiopia, Sumbawi, India, China, and other surprising countries. Even more surprisingly, to some, is that members of the lost tribes living in these countries look like any other people native to their regions. Again, guys, it was never about a particular race. We blended in with all the cultures. That is the original tribes of Israel. We, yes, we are, you know, the tribes of Israel, right? Not the people in Israel today. Um, we come with, our skin is different. Our skin is different colors, all right? It's not just white. It's not just dark. It's not just, you know, black. And it's everything in between and everything, okay? All right, so what problems did the lost... And, and the reason I say that, that the lost 10 tribes of Israel have, have been absorbed into the different continents, um, becoming, you know, different skin types, is because of the fact that I want to stop the... Um, the super, uh, what do they call the extremist philosophers out there who believe that they were only... The Africans, right? There are certain Africans that believe that the original Israelites were all black and therefore the black are the chosen race, all right? Those are called supremist movements. Others believe that they were Aryan and that they were white skinned, right? And everybody else was not the chosen ones. I don't agree with neither. And then others believe that they were people from the Middle East. I believe that the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel went everywhere and they uh, absorbed into every culture, into every race. Okay. That's my personal belief. There is no such thing as a supreme ruler race or a supreme race. Okay. That is my personal belief. So they are not, we can't say Jewish was, I mean, Jesus was black. We can't say Jesus was um, white. You know, he was Mediterranean, right? We do know that, but we do know that the lost 10 tribes of Israel represent all the different cultures as well. That's what I'm trying to say. 
right? Because I know there's some people out there who strongly believe that Jesus, Jesus was a black man. And then there are some other people opposing camps who believe that he was a white man, all right? So I just wanted to say that I don't abide by any of those extremist sides, okay? All right, so let's continue here. So many people believe ridiculous superstitions about the Jewish people and ostracize them and blame them for influencing bad fortune, illness, and death. All right, uh, that article is not that great after a while, but I do have another article that was actually really good. Okay, so this was written by a person that is non-religious, an actual scholar, okay? This title, this article is called The Perplexing History of the Ten Lost Tribes. The Perplexing History of the Ten Lost Tribes. So in Genesis 45, we read about Judah's confrontation with Joseph and the later subsequent revelation of his true identity. The Torah tells us that Joseph kissed all of his brothers and went over them. Genesis 45, 15, uh, the Sohar. Okay, the Sohar is the, um, was part of the mystical you know, Kabbalah, the, the mysticism of the Jewish culture. They call it the Sohar Sephirith. So according to the Sohar Sephirith, the verse that Joseph went uh, because he foresaw the future destruction of the Holy Temple and the ex lie of his brothers and ten tribes. The Sohar is referencing, is referring to the ancient nations, notion, the ancient notion that the ten of the twelve tribes of Israel were lost to history. The Zohar notes that the Torah first says that the Joseph went over to Benjamin's shoulder and then separately states that he swept over the remaining ten brothers. This is alluring to the tragedy of the lost ten tribes, among which Benjamin is not numbered. The land of Benjamin bordered Judah's, and Jerusalem was built partly on Judah's territory and partly on Benjamin's. When the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed, Benjamin was mostly spared and is therefore not counted among the lost ten tribes. We see the further proof of this in... A book titled The Migalot Ether or Esther, the Migalot Esther, where Mordechai is described as being both a Judaite and a Benjamite. Okay. So let's see. This is. <laughs> uh, there's really not much about the Lost Ten Tribes. Um. As much as I try to research articles about the Lost Ten Tribes, every information, everything we know about them was comes from the Bible, for the most part. Uh, let's see. I do have one, one more article that I wanted to share. All right, so this is coming from uh, Biblio Dallas Network. So... This conventional wisdom, the, the print here is so small, bear with me. Conventional wisdom declares the house of Israel, the northern ten tribes led by the half-tribes of Joseph, to be lost. Whoa, there goes my camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> to be lost. That was my camera falling, guys. Um, the northern ten tribes led by half-tribes of Joseph to be lost. They recently released... A CD beyond the Samboyaton, the myth of the Lost Ten Tribes, cites evidence of Israelites' uh, habitation or influence from Japan uh, to the Americas, to Pakistan and Nigeria. Yet, in the end, its producers uh, poo-poo the idea that Israelites other than the Jews even exist today, concluding they have either been absorbed into other nations or return with the Jewish from Babylon. See, that's what I said. The original 10 tribes went to other continents and they absorbed with other, you know, nations. So if we believe God, however, we cannot accept this rather facile conclusion. The scriptures cannot be broken. According to John chapter 10, verse 35, Jesus said, who also says I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He also sent his disciples to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, Matthew 10, chapter 10, verse 6. Even his statement in John, chapter 10, 16, and other sheep I have, other sheep which are not of this fold, implies that he recognized that the bulk 
of the ten tribes of Israel were not among the Jews of his day. Uh, Jesus certainly did not think Israel had irretrievable disappeared. Right? The Apostle James, Jesus' half-brother, wrote an epistle to the Israelites about A.D. 60. James, a servant of God and the Lord, Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. If he addressed a letter to them, he would certainly have to know where they lived to send it. Writing near the turn of the second century A.D., the historian Josephus confirms that the Jews knew where Israel lived. The entire body of the people of Israel remained in that country, where for there are but two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, in the Asia and European subject to the Romans. So in Asia, Europe was subject to the Romans, while the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates till now and are an immense multitude and not to be estimated by numbers. So what this is telling us is that, again, it aligns with what I said at the beginning of the live, that the lost ten tribes um, fled to not be controlled by the Roman Empire and by the Assyrian Empire before them, okay? They went to go live their lives in freedom. So again, my theory that they were the original pre-European settle, settlers with those that went over to Africa and those that came over to the Amer Americas and then one that went over to Asia, it all makes perfect sense, guys. They fled the region where the empires were, were you know, blooming in Mesopotamia. So it makes a lot of sense that they dispersed, okay? They weren't killed. They didn't disappear. They just dispersed. They, they sought refuge, in other words. Neither can we forget the prophecies of the end time in which God promises to return them to the land of Israel. Well, one of the things that I've come to uncover in my vast research is that the land of milk and honey that was promised to the descendants of Jacob and Abraham is the United States of America. All right. It was never supposed to be Israel. It was supposed to be the constitutional republic, the free world. All right. So in a way, you know, God divided the people. We could say that there was a division in ancient Babylon. And now it's the reverse. Now we're the people are coming back here in America. And that explains why America is the melting pot of the world. This is where all the races, all the cultures come together as one. Right. America, the United States of America. So it is my personal belief that the what the Bible was referring to as the land of milk and honey, as the promised land, was no other than the United States of America. And this is before it became corporate America, okay? Because the original blueprint laid down by our founding fathers, or technically the Knights Templars before them, um, was about resurrecting the golden age of Atlantis. But first they needed to what? to create a constitutional republic that would honor every citizen where the power was invested in the people and not the, you know, the, the elites. So neither can we forget the prophecies of the end of time in which God promises the return of them to the land of Israel it is but a sample of dozens of similar prophecies through both testaments. But I will bring back Israel to his habitation. And he shall feed on, okay, this is going into the metaphor. Let me see if there's anything important that I could read about the Lost Ten Tribes. Uh, like I said, there's not much history about the Lost Ten Tribes. Okay, Searching for Israel. This is another document written by Charles Whitaker and from 1944 to 2021, forerunner. Nowadays, everybody from grammar school pupils to graduate students use search criteria to locate information quickly on the Internet. Search criteria are those Sigma posts a research engine uses to locate websites. For example, wait, wait, this is not what I wanted to read. <laughs> so 10 and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not what I wanted to read. Um... You guys could bear with me. All right, this is a good one. So God told Ephraim, right? Ephraim was one of the lost tribes, to mark their way so that they could return one day to the promised land, set up sink posts, make landmarks. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into the biblical stuff. Uh, 
Let's see. All right, so it is believed that the tribe of Benjamin was wiped out by other Israelites. That's what they say. So that would leave us, what, to 11 tribes? Makes no sense. Oh, by the way, guys, my interview with George Norrie was really good. Um, I think I, I might have, uh, I think I might have, like, stretched his mind beyond just, the, you know, the concept of disclosure, reverse engineered, you know, gravity aircraft, gra gravity, anti-gravity aircraft, um, stuff like that. I, I think George Norrie was really impressed with what I had to say about the cosmic and galactic connection to what's happening on the Earth. So, yeah, um, it was good. It was a very good interview. And if you guys want to watch the interview, um, it is on their website, uh, The Best of Coast to Coast. And I believe they titled it The Galactic Federation or something like that. So that's the title of my interview, all right? If you guys want to watch it on Coast to Coast. <laughs> all right, so Ricky Lee, 1111, says, yeah, you blew his mind. <laughs> I sure hope so. Because um, he was just letting me talk, talk and talk. He had to, like, remind me that there was commercials, right? That we also had to incorporate commercials. Well, I didn't realize that. I thought I was just going to talk for an hour or two, but it's okay because that's how radio is, right? You talk for about 10 minutes and then we go into like a five, 10 minute commercial or five minute commercial. I'm sorry. And then we talk for 10 minutes and every 10 minutes we break off into a commercial. That's radio for you. AM radio. Okay. So we know of another tribe where Moses come from. So Moses come from the tribe of Levi. Okay, so I believe that there are 13 tribes. I believe that there is a hidden tribe. All right, nobody talks about the hidden tribe. History talks about 12. 10 of them were lost. But I believe that there was a 13th tribe. And I think that's the tribe of the original. <laughs> that is the tribe of David, guys. That is the tribe of the Holy Grail. The original. That's the 13th tribe. I mean, of course, they call it the tribe of Judah. But I do believe that if we add the tribe of Levi to the tribe of Benjamin and Judah and Levi and all the other 10 tribes, that gives us a total of 13 tribes, if you think about it. Thank you for all the love. And if you guys are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Again, the reason I chose this topic tonight was because it was a suggestion by one of the Galactic Jedi. So if you guys have some topics that you guys want me to elaborate on, you know, research on, please drop it in the comments, okay? Drop it in the comments, and I am gladly to elaborate on any topic, any subject you guys want me to elaborate on. <clears throat> so, okay, so it is believed that the tribe of Dan was removed because of the tribe's association with idolatry. Interesting. Dan is also left out of the list of tribes in the book of Revelation as well. Um, for those that didn't know, the whole idea of worshiping God, idol image, you know, external worship, that originated with Babylon, with the cabal in Babylon, just to let you guys know. Which was adopted by the Catholic Church, of course. So another tribe that was not mentioned in Revelation, but again, it's mentioned in the Book of Mormon, for those that have studied uh, the Mormon religion, is the tribe of Ephraim. It is believed that the tribe of Ephraim uh, and Manasseh are actually in the Americas, and some are even in the Great Britain. So, so yeah, so they believe that the tribe of Ephraim became the Great Brit the, the British, and the tribe of Manasseh became the Americans. Interesting. <laughs> like I said, guys, you know, the lost 10 tribes of Israel never were lost. All they did was dispersed, dispersed and secluded themselves from the empires in order to live according to the original uh, rules that were left with Abraham and Melchizedek. If you guys want to go back to Abraham.
Um, yeah, there's not much information on the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. But for those that are new to, uh, or that are just jumping in on the live, um, I personally believe that they were the the 10 barbaric, well, that's what history calls them, the 10 unknown tribes. Think about it. Why would there, why would there be 10 tribes that collapsed the Roman Empire, right, that ransacked Rome to its knees? Who do you think they were? I think that they were the lost 10 tribes of Israel collapsing the empire, getting back at the Babylonian empires, right? All the empires were driven by the Babylonian Brotherhood, by the way, as revealed in the secret government. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think, um, so based on the idea that the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel escaped the Mesopotamian region to uh, flee persecution, tells us that a lot of you, Galactic Jedis, believe it or not, um, are descendants of the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel, right? That's my opinion. That's my opinion. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and take questions and answers now. Again, there's not a lot of research when it comes to the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. There's not a lot of information in circulation, guys. I, I really I really had to dig deep for these a couple or three articles that I shared with you guys. And they really don't share much. You know, they're, they go, they're very aligned with the Bible. So I just wanted to let you guys know that there's not much on that. But according to the prophecies, it is believed that the lost ten tribes of Israel would be once again reunited, right, before the millennium. Well, it is my personal belief, like I mentioned, that they are reunited here in America. In America, okay? And that explains why the mothership known as the... Um, the mothership known as the New Jerusalem, the Dove, is descend. Is going to be descending upon the American continent because of that fact. One second. Let me close my door. <laughs> Sorry. I had to close my door because... Anyways, um, I, I don't have to mention. <laughs> I just, I, I can't stand secondhand uh, cigarettes or secondhand smoke. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some questions from the Galactic Jedis. I'm actually going to use my phone so I could go ahead and reach. Because <clears throat> on my screen, they look way too blurry. <laughs> no, I don't want an iPhone. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Galactic Jedi. So, oh, yes. The other name of the New Jerusalem is Nemesis. Nemesis, that's the uh, twin sister of our star, right? They also call it the Brown Dwarf, Nibiru. It goes by so many names. I see all these super chats. Joyful. Thank you so much for your super chat, sister. Your question is, Ishmael, are we going to ascend to 5D through portals or stay put in our homes. Well, um, as I explained to uh, this, my students this morning in my 10 o'clock class and in my 3 o'clock class, uh, the dimensions are here, guys. We're not going anywhere, all right? We're just going to shift reality, all right? So you're going to stay in your house. All we're going to do, do is be translated from the third density into the fourth or fifth density. That's it. So we're not going anywhere. So, yes, we're going to stay in our house. The stargates are going to open. Reality is going to shift. And uh, one of the things that I shared in my class this morning was that every time there's a shift of ages, the old electromagnetic magnetic field declines and it is quickly replaced by a new electromagnetic field that is more capable of operating on many dimensions. So that's um, <clears throat> what's going to be happening. Sunshine is in the house. How are you doing, Sunshine? Thank you so much for this info. Appreciate it. I've read some other articles that mention the same thing. Yes. Yes, there is so much speculation that they were never lost. They were never killed. They just fled 
persecution, and enslavement. That's it. They fled so that they could continue their spiritual practices isolated from the from the empires, right? That's why I believe that the ancient Druids of, of Ireland, the Celts, were one of the lost ten tribes of Israel. Because they were very advanced spiritual cultures. Even the Ostrogoths of Portugal and the Visigoths of Spain and the Franks, or the sorry, yeah, the Franks of uh of France. Well, they were known as Gaul back then. They were all very spiritual, right? They were all very, very uh aligned with Mother Earth and with one another. They lived in a community. I have another super chat from Sylvia Vidal. How are you doing, Sylvia? Thank you for your super chat. Ishmael, can you pick up our energy and thoughts through the live too? Well, because there is 742 of you on the live, um, I can't pick up on your energy individually, but I could pick up on the collective energy, yes. And the collective energy is good. It is of the light and it's full of love. Thank you guys for resonating that, by the way. To answer your question, Sylvia. So this is a question from Linda, Linda Hassi. She says, Ishmael, when do you think that the solar flash is going to happen? And then she says, no, she says, she's asking, do you think it's going to happen soon? That's her question. I'm sorry, the chat is moving so fast. Um, well, it is believed that the end of March or the beginning of April could be the great solar flash, right? It is believed a lot of people are, that are sensitive, that are intuitive, that are empaths are feeling it. Um, again, even the media is warning us about a Carrington event, right? Because we're approaching solar maximum. <laughs> so... It's always best to be prepared, guys, okay? I don't want to give a for sure date, but let's live life as if it's coming in two weeks or three weeks or four at the most, okay? Let's just live life accordingly. That's a very good question. All right, this is an interesting question from Gia, five, six, peace, lover. She says, hi, Ishmael. Can we have a galactic group for each city or country so we can meet up? A galactic group? Um, you mean after the ascension? I'm not sure. Or pre the ascension, like now? That would be a great idea. I wouldn't even know how to organize that. I know that you guys are all spread out throughout the planet. Um, I live in LA. Uh, but again, it, in my website, I created a forum that is free that we where we could all come together and interact beyond the live here, of course. So I don't know if you guys have gone on my website and been, you know, make sure you guys check out my website. Be a part of the forum, guys. OK, be a part of the forum. I'm about twice a week, maybe once a week. I'm going to do my best to interact and be part of the forum as well. Oh, and yes, guys, I did open up a new class for 10 more people, which is going to take place next Monday, five days from now, at 10 o'clock and at 3 o'clock, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 3 o'clock Pacific time. So if you guys want to join my course, it is mind-blowing, guys. You guys are getting, you know, four courses, four classes, tons of information. And yes, as a reminder, please put your questions in capital letters. All right, so this is a question from Ricky Lee. He says, since there is no time in the higher dimensions, will there be night and day? And the answer to that is uh, no, not in the higher dimensions. There is only daytime. We don't really sleep. Right. The, the only reason. Oh, there goes my camera again. The only reason why we sleep is because of uh, our mortal bodies. OK, but once we go into our divine heavenly bodies, right, our light bodies, there is no need to sleep. So, no, we're not going to be sleeping at all. Not in the higher dimensions.
Yes, I, I don't like putting dates anymore. That's right. Not the Mothman says I don't trust dates, but hopefully. Hey guys, if the solar flash would happen right now, that would be great. But everything in divine timing, right? Everything in divine timing. Live in the moment. That's right. Cosmo Girls reminding us to be live in the moment. And don't forget to appreciate the journey too of ascension, not just the destination. Let's enjoy the journey together. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Sylvia Vidal, when the money comes rolling in, in, we can all afford to meet up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Once we get the humanitarian uh, funds, right, the redistribution of money, um, where money won't be an issue, we could all, you know, vac vac vacation and meet up like somewhere in like Acapulco or uh, the Bahamas. You know, we could all do, we could all meet up. That's right. Thank you for pointing that out, Sylvia. Oh, I'm also going to be, uh, for those that live in California, I'm going to be presenting at the living, no, what is it called? The Biomed Alien Event. That's coming up uh, April 11, no, 10, 11, and 12. It's a weekend. I'm going to be presenting there. Uh, I'm going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation, breaking down the cosmic structure. Um, make sure that you guys, if you guys want to meet me, for those who live in California, I will be there at the Biomed Alien Event, okay? And then for those that are going to the San Rafael New Living Expo, the 19th to the 21st of April, I'm also going to be there presenting as well. I'm just throwing that out there. For those that live in Northern California or Oregon, and you're planning to attend the New Living Expo, I will be there presenting. So Jamie Lavenwell is asking me, what's my website? It's ourcosmicorigin.com. I'll just go ahead and put it here. But I always put it in the description at the end of every live. I always write it in the description. Okay, so ourcosmicorigin.com. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and pin this. I think I spelled it right, right? Or cosmicorigin.com. That's my website, guys. Yes, there is no night in the higher dimensions, says Amanda. No nighttime. It's only day. Again, nighttime is a duality, you know? It's part of the polarity that we live in here in the third density. As we move up to fifth density, there is no more polarity. Well, there is, but it's not as polarized. It's more balanced. And then once we move up into sixth density, guess what? There is no more duality. It's only a singularity. <clears throat> well, you guys that want to sleep, we only sleep because our carbon-based DNA body gets tired. But imagine if you were in a body that never got tired, <laughs> that never got tired. All right, this is important to know. This is shared by our sister Shakina. She says, star seeds are barometers for the waves of ascension. We can literally feel cosmic energies other people can't feel. So yeah, we are fine-tuned instruments reading the times with our higher chakras. Very, very true. Thank you, Shakina, for sharing that with us. Uh, Wolfman has a question or, no, or, or comment. I'm looking forward to meeting and training with you powerful Jedi. Absolutely, guys. That's going to be awesome. 
Wolfman is in the house. Kevin is in the house. Uh, spirit don't eat or sleep. Only the human space meat, <laughs> space suit we wear, he says. <laughs> true, very true. Oh, as a reminder, um, Saturday night at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be having William Henry on my channel here. William Henry is going to join us. Sunshine, how you doing, sister? Thank you so much for the uh, super chat. You're always so, so generous, sister. Um, helping out with your Zoom upgrade you had to do this morning. Oh, thank you. Best protein powder to use she wants to know what the best protein powder to use well i tried them all i tried them all and what works for me is paleo which is grass-fed beef uh made into protein actually i'll show you guys what i use one second It's no GMO, it's no GMO, no uh, no dairy, no gluten, it's all organic, grass-fed and pasteurized. Um, yeah, this is the kind of protein I use. Thank you once again, Sunshine, for that um, super chat, sister. And I will see you next week for class number two. Sunshine was a uh, part of class number one today. Let's see. I'm looking for questions. I'm so glad I, I took Athena potty really quick when I first breaked at the beginning of the live because she would have been hurting right now if she would have had to wait over an hour. <laughs> Lunch is on Ishmael. Why not? When we all meet, I'm going to buy everybody a... Uh, lunch. I'm going to buy everybody dinner or lunch, whatever you guys prefer, and whatever drink you guys want. Um, I, I normally don't drink. I have virgin drinks, but if you guys want to have a glass of wine, I'll buy you guys a glass of wine. So this is a question. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, a question from Cosmic Goddess. Thank you so much, sister, for your super chat. Hi, Ishmael. Will we still have blood types? Like, that's a good question. Bleed or even have blood in higher dimensions? like here in three dimensions. Mm, no. Once we activate the crystalline DNA and we move from carbon base to crystalline, um, our body, our blood becomes electricity. It becomes like electricity, right? It's, it's like the life force. Well, our blood in the third dimension is, you know, it's liquid, but in a higher dimension is electricity. So it's we're going to have bodies with electricity running through us. So we will no longer bleed. <laughs> That's a very good question. I have a super chat from Ingrid. How are you doing, Ingrid? Thank you so much for the super chat. She says, Ishmael, how will medbeds react when the soul has decided to leave? That's a very good question. Well, again, medbeds don't bring people back from the dead, all right? That is a different technology known as the, the cocoon chambers. Medbeds only heal illnesses or and even limbs if you if you lose a limp medbeds don't bring those back it is another technology called the holographic regenerator that brings back the limbs so medbeds only heal illnesses cancer uh heart disease you know hiv everything that you know western medicine cannot heal mental illness as well Let's see did you have a second part Oh, yeah. So 
Oh, your question is, when the soul has decided to leave, um, it is up to you. In the fifth dimensional reality, or fourth dimensional, no, let's say the fifth dimensional, you have a lifespan of thousands and thousands of years, and it's up to you to transition, right? Because death doesn't exist there anymore. So that's up to you. <clears throat> and then the second part of your question is, heal and the soul can still decide after healing to leave the planet or stay. Again, that is all up to you. Free will is always honored. So much gratitude. Thank you, sister. Likewise. Uh, Brandon, Brand, oh, Brandon Breyer is asking me to touch more on the Brotherhood of Melchizedek. Well, that's the order of light. In fact, I dedicate a whole chapter here in the secret government to the Brotherhood of Melchizedek. Um, they are the forces of light here on the earth, as opposed to the Cabal, the Leviathan Brotherhood of the Snake, which was Anki, right? So the Brotherhood of Melchizedek uh, originated, again, going back to the 12 tribes of Israel, of ancient Israel, uh, with a pact that was established between Abraham and Melchizedek himself. It's also a brotherhood that could be traceable and sisterhood that could be traceable back to Egypt and technically back to Atlantis. So in essence, they are the Great White Brotherhood and the Melchizedek Order, right? So enlightened men and women that have been associated with this brotherhood have been the original illuminated seers, high priest and high priestess, the magicians of white, the healers, the therapeutae, according to the Egyptians, the Essenes of ancient Judea. And now they are us. That's what we are. We are the Brotherhood of Light. We are the return Melchizedeks, each and every single one of you. Dana S. is asking me a, an important question. <clears throat> She's saying, Oh, wait, where's that question? What is the difference between the between Galactic Federation and Intergalactic Confederation? Um, the difference is that the Galactic Federation um, is mainly concerned with affairs taking place within our local universe, whereas the Intergalactic Confederation is inclusive of other universes and other galaxies as well. So that is the difference, right? So we have an intergalactic alliance of many galaxies coming together from many universes. And then we have a galactic alliance, which is different interplanetary and interstellar cultures that are coming together. So the difference is that one is just uh, referring to the positive civilizations here in our galaxy and in our universe. And the other is referring to the positive civilizations in multiple galaxies and in multiple universes. That's the difference. Uh, my favorite color, uh, Joshua John is asking me if my favorite color is black. No, it's actually blue. Blue and purple are my favorite color. Yes, Diane Adams is asking, are they removing the bad Trump and Elon permanently? Yes, because the bad Trump... And the bad Elon, again, were generated by the negative AI that has been controlling the cabal. So, yes, they will be removed. And only the original, or may we say the good ones, are going to be left behind. I do have a uh, super chat from Stuart Williams. Thank you so much, brother. And for your little cartoon character flying the rocket ship. <laughs> it's cute.
Sam Griffin said, listen to the interview with George Nori, like the explanation of the hybrid star seeds. Oh, you're welcome, Sam. Yeah, that was a really good interview. He, you know, George Nori actually asked me some really good questions, guys. Really good. <clears throat> Yes, we will all heal like Wolverine soon. Absolutely. Linda Hassey's asking me uh, if we need to worry about paying our taxes for 2023. Mm. I don't want to say don't and then get you in trouble. Just go ahead and do so, right? But when Nisera Gisera become implemented, which is going to absolve and dissolve the IRS, all that money is coming back to you. So I would say yes. As far as I hate to say this, you still have to comply with the law, unfortunately. I just, you know, I don't want to say no. And then, you know, it takes a while before Nasara comes in and you end up going to jail because of what I said. So I'm not, I don't want to give you wrong advice. Just pay, him, pay it anyways, just to be safe. And when the new financial system rolls out and the IRS is eliminated, all of that money comes back to you. Wolfman says Jedis will not need med beds. <laughs> the chat is going by so fast, but again, I'm looking for questions that a lot of you might have. All right, so Nicole Antoinette is asking, when do you think the war in Gaza will end? It makes me sad to see so much suffering over there. I feel you, sister. You know, when it when it comes to these cabal conspired, you know, conflicts and orchestrated wars, um, contrived, whatever you want to call it, there's always innocent casualties. My hope is that Nisera Gesera come through. My hope is that the cabal becomes absolved, like within the next week or two, or perhaps the next month, so that we could see all that come to an end. And even 45 says that as soon as he comes into office. We're not. He's going to drop the war. He's going to end the war in Israel. I do have a super chat from Joyful. Thank you so much. She says, Ishmael, when will we see the real Trump again? Tired of all the fakes. I really miss Trump. Um, if not sooner, then by no later than November. How's that? But hopefully sooner. Hopefully sooner is the case. <laughs> No, no, no. Okay, so Michelle Mongian Mon is asking, when you ascend, your body dies, right? No, not at all, right? There, we're not going to experience death. We're literally going to be transfigured, just like Enoch was transfigured, right? Enoch was transfigured from a mortal to an immortal. So are we. So when we ascend, we're just going to be transfigured. Our bodies are just going to morph into a better body, into a more sturdier body into a lighter, denser body, a less dense body. That's what's going to happen.
Uh, so Joseph, Joseph, Jose is asking, what are the different star systems of the different races on the planet? Well, there are over 200,000 star systems <laughs> that are represented here on this planet. Um, just to name a few. Tossetians, Pleiadians, Aquifarians, Arcturians, Hadarians, Arctur um, Lyrians, uh, Mink Mintakians, um, Alpha Centaurians, Procyonis, Cassiopians. I mean, the list goes on. There are just so many star systems that are represented here on the Earth. So Baby Blue Notes is asking me if the electric wars are over. Yes. Yes, the electric wars were actually fought in dimensions 7, 8, and 9, which were a – they were fought at a high level of reality that it literally appeared as if cosmic rays were battling one another. Those were known as the – that's why they call them the electric wars. And they were fought – uh, for the control of the Stargates and the genetic angelic blueprint that was inserted in Lyra, in the Aramatena, what we call the, um, or I'm sorry, in the Avion, eighth dimensional Earth. That's where they were fought. So um, I go into detail regarding all of the different phases of the cosmic and galactic wars in my course. Um, that's going to be course number three. <laughs> right now, I just finished course number one. Course number one. Just to give you guys an idea of what it was, I covered the unveiling the cosmic blueprint. That's course number one. So that happened today. All right. If you guys want to sign up for my courses, um, the link is in my bio. I've also um, pinned it here on the um, on the chat. I only have room for 10 people at a time. That's it, guys. Just 10 people at a time. So it could be intimate, personal, and indirect. The next class starts Monday. I have a 10 o'clock class in the morning and a 3 o'clock class in the afternoon. We I go over everything. Everything, guys. It's 25 years of research and transmissions and knowledge put into four classes. A lot of information. Trenton Williams is in the house. Thank you so much for the super chat, brother. If both sides are using time travel... Couldn't this theoretically keep going on forever with each side time traveling to undo whatever the other side did? That's a very good question. How do we know for certain that the White Hats got this in the bag? Well, because the, there is another element beyond the cabal and beyond the, the White Hats that are keepers of the timelines and those are known as the time lords they operate from the central universe of the havana again guys if you guys take my course man we break down the entire cosmic structure i go over all the different orders the council of nine the council of 12 the council of five the council of 24 the interdimensional association of worlds the intergalactic alliances uh the different commanders the cosmic organization, the suppressed history, the galactic history, the cosmic history, the electric wars, the galactic wars, the cosmic wars, the Elohim wars. <sighs> you guys are going to come out of my course like this. And you and you could take notes. I'm, I'm going slow so that everybody could take notes. <laughs> um, but again, I'm only taking 10 students at a time. So to answer your question, uh, yeah, the Time Lords that operate from the central universe, my friend, have the final say-so when it comes to all the time traveling that is taking place in the lower harmonic universes. And also, a version of us that have been set apart as the guardians of the, the looking glass technology, um, I think they call us, the name of that branch is known as J-Rods, the J-Rod group. The J-Rod group are part of a future corporation known as Time Corps. The Time Corps are working with the Time Lords, right? They are the future version of us, a group of us that have aligned with the Time Lords to secure the time land, the, the time wars, right? That's another aspect of the wars, the electrical wars, the galactic wars, the time wars, 
the the wars of the Elohim, uh, and then of course the final war with AI at the end of the millennium. This war against the Ariman, the Archon, the king of the Asuras, AI Omega, has been going on and has been divided into five faces. <laughs> And then to answer the last part of your question, Trenton. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, that's why the Y-heads are ultimately, have ultimately pinned down the cabal on every probable future timeline because of the Time Corp organization from the future who are a group of us. Some of us become part of that. In fact, um, Jace, James Ring brought it up, and I'm going to, you know, remind you guys that a lot of the star seeds, a lot of these, you know, us adults now, that's what we are adults now. A lot of us were used. He says all of them. He says all of them. I don't know if that's true. That could be true, which means that every single one of you guys was part of a super soldier program, both men and women. You just have no recollection because they mind wiped us. All right, guys, I'm going to take two more questions. <clears throat> it's been a long day to me today for me. I taught two courses from 10 to 12 and from 3 to 5. <laughs> and then between 5 and 6, between 5 and now, I was proofreading um, the final version of the upcoming book, The Secret Government. I still have to finish that. So I've been up and working since we could say my day started at six at the gym. So I've been working all day. But I love spending time with you guys. You guys are amazing. Now, again, as a reminder, this Saturday, I'm going to have William Henry as my guest. Somebody's asking, do you, do you have any idea as to how many uh, terrorists are in Iraq? Well, what if I tell you that the real terrorists are the cabal, all right? So all of those sponsored groups that are out there create, wrecking havoc have all been financed by Washington. Maybe I shouldn't say that here. Oh, and as a reminder, guys, I'm going live finally after two weeks of not, after two weeks of ignoring my... Um, what is it? My Rumble channel. I'm going to be going live on Rumble and I'm going to be reading one of my chapters. Well, I'm going to be going over one of my chapters that I normally couldn't talk about here. All right. We're going to go into some of this uh, stuff that is that is censored. <laughs> so Friday night at six o'clock, I will be live on my Rumble channel. Make sure you guys subscribe to The Real Ishmael Perez. I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to end the live. So Sunshine is asking me if I'm doing my uh, four-week course for a few months. I am. And the new one starts Monday of next week, five days from now. So um, make sure. Again, I'm only taking 10 individuals. So a lot of you asked me that you guys were too late. It was already booked. So make sure you guys get on the website or CosmicOrigin.com and book uh, next week, Monday. I have two, two times, 10 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then uh, one final question. Uh, somebody wants to know 
What starseed am I? I am a Lyran, Syrian. But I'm also a hybrid soul, which means that I have lifetimes in, you know, as an Arcturian, as an Andromedan, um, as a Pleiadian. So I am a soul hybrid, like a lot of you are. And with that in mind, I think I'm going to call it quits. All right. We will see you guys Friday night on my Rumble channel at 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern time for some uncensored information. It's going to be good. And, um, yeah, we'll see you then. And then Saturday with William Henry at the same time, 6 o'clock. May the God force be with you all.